பூணமதக பூணமிதம் பூணாத் பூணமுதக் பூணய பூணமாதாய பூணமே வாவசிஷ்யே ஓம் சாந்தி 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 வசுதேவசுதம் தேவம் கன்சானூரமர்தனம் தேவகி பரமானந்தம் கிருஷ்ணம் வந்தே ஜகத்குரும் ஓம் எருடேஷன்ஸ் லோட் கிருஷ்ணா தி ப்ரிசெப்டர் ஆஃப் தி யூனிவர்ஸ் டிஸ்ட்ராயர் ஆஃப் தி ஃபோர்ஸஸ் ஆஃப் டார்க்னஸ் அண்ட் பிஸ்டோர் ஆஃப் இம்மோட்டாலிட்டி ஸ்ரீமத் பகவத்கீதா இன் சாப்டர் நைன் verse number is 16 the chapter is entitled raja vidya raja guhya yoga and it presents the plan of integral yoga when all the four aspects of yoga enters into your scheme of sadhana so your action aspect is karma yoga your feeling aspect is bhakti yoga the willing aspect what you should have the will has to you shouldn't go in swill and your profound understanding aspect buddhi jnana yoga when all these four yogas begin to flow like in a melody now you are in ekar in gita terminology you are pursuing the path of raja vidya raja guhya yoga the yoga of royal knowledge and royal secret so all that is needed in your spiritual path in your sadhana they will come automatically because you are following the raja's order your royal path and you have we have welcome certificate gatir bharta prabhu sakshi nivasa sharanam surit பிரபவ பிரளயஸ்தானம் நிதானம் பீஜம் அவ்யம் ஹவ் மச் ஹஸ் பின் கண்டென்ஸ்ட் இன் ஒன் தீஸ் டூ லைன்ஸ் நவு ஃபர்ஸ்ட் பி யூஆர் பீங் ப்ரெசென்டெட் தட் ஆஸ் யூ பிகின் டு ப்ராக்ரெஸ் இன் யோகா but already have defined yoga as integral you cannot follow one yoga and discard others if you want success it will always integral so if, if you are following that yoga you will not stay individualized you will not stay yourself in a jiva state a soul that is constantly moving from one body to another that soul and it's a predicament the soul is always gripped by samsara world process which is cycle of birth and death now your soul will have a different understanding of itself soul put it in a very simple way it is a very effective practice of god word vision in the early stage 
you are a reflected sun in a jar of water and your predicament is shaking along with the water you would never know what will be exact settlement because water cannot secure your any settlement water is constantly there will be times a jar will become calm and the mud goes down and the water gets more clear and sun reflects but how long the mud begins to shake up water shakes up then the reflecting your reflection aspect the soul that is ref- reflected self is constantly shaken led by karma you can change your parts and change your water content but that is not the goal of life the goal is the sun this realizing allegorically your gati where you have to go and go to the realm of the sun the abode of god is the beginning as if you are someone separate entity you are going but try to understand what happens when reflected self becomes enlightened the sun reflecting in a jar when water has become purified the question of its going there to be united doesn't arise but to a kid you can explain that way now the son is not in misery he has gone to his dada <laughs> his grandfather now that godward movement how does it appear how does how, how do you experience it that's a profound movement that shakes up your three lokas first loka is your practical world how do you deal with practical world handle practical problems etc secondly how you deal with your heart with lots of feelings whom do you love what is where is the love what can you secure to keep your heart warm and comfortable and then the third loka your understanding the intellect level what should you know and what you are not knowing who is hiding secrets from you and that's the vast that's gyan yoga so if you become deeply involved in the practice of integral yoga and you begin to progress allegorically you are ascending or soaring towards god but soaring towards god is a revelation that i am that aham brahmasmi from the state aham jivasmi i am the jiva ab <laughs> brahmas so between these two there is a big process the entire process is allegorical is not doesn't require a space movement in a space but movement in your awakening keeping that in view gita presents steps very profound steps in first stage early stage the world you live in that world 
will become a source of inspiration. So therefore, Gita introduces Vibhu, Vibhuti Yoga, the Yoga of Divine Glories. Now you begin to live, you glorify God in your own personality. And you look at the world, and the world is glorifying more than your tongue can do. Even a little blossom is bringing out something so amazing. With all the science and technology, you can't just construct something that plants bring out so easily. Who is doing that? So when scientists does that, people become so stirred up. <laughs> but allow your mind to develop a little more expect extension and expansion. The world is full of inspiration and a constant source of profound satsanga. Of course, that's the purpose of satsanga. Satsanga enables you. If your satsanga concept remains only going to a satsanga conference, it's limited. But I'm not discouraging, even the very limited, even the very restricted, is a good beginning. But how do you know that you are succeeding in satsang? When you become yourself a basis for promoting sanamati in others, if you are successful, you live and conduct yourself such a way that others begin to understand themselves better and come to the right line. Quickly I am saying this has many aspects. Slightest little help you are giving to relieve a person of a dis distress that part becomes a part of satsanga. You are allowing divine quality to enter. When compassion sits in your heart, it's a source of tremendous satsanga. When humility enters, that changes your mind in a very profound way for the better. So, I'm leaning towards suddenly going into a very high level. <laughs> come back to the practical level, that should be your mental attitude. Hungry for having more and more satsanga and sharing it with others. And when you are looking at the world around you, the world should not pour into your mind all things that are just presented by TV and news. Not this news media, but the divine news. Let the divine news break. <laughs> Ex piercing through the clouds. And that news is, behold the lilies of the field, how do they grow? In the biblical statement, even Solomon was not arrayed like any one of these. So implying your mind receives a lot of joy and inspiration even just by nature, the world around you. And the world is, your whole body itself is related to the world in a profound way. 
So even in your own body, you are seeing the act of God. And that type of internal movement is a Godward movement. And you have taken now a mighty step when your mind opens up to the vibhutis of God. And then your consciousness comes to another, another level. You begin to see all the entire universe in one personality. And that's the God. Vishwarupa Darshan. Here, Krishna shows the entire world, past, present, future, all that is in the world, positive, negative, all is one personality, Krishna himself. So now your, your mind comes to another level, that Virat Darshan. But Virat Darshan paves the way to Aham Brahmasmi. Now we begin to understand that all that vibhutis you saw, glories, and all this gigantic manifestation of, of the Divine as Vishwarup, cosmic form, all that is the glory of I Am. And you are the I Am. You are not the ego. Therefore, in the Gita, after showing Virat form, Krishna tells Arjuna that you have to gain Jnana Chakshu, spiritual vision, by going to the Guru and following the path, learning about Vedanta and all that. I am not going through that detail. So keeping that in view, and also, this prepares your mind for practicing affirmation. So that's the purpose. When you practice meditation, you are calming your mind. You are bringing to your mind a vision of the goal. But that vision is not one, one, one word statement. It has man, manifold implications, like the sun begins to shine, but it has countless rays that arise out of it. So, coming back to simple way to understand, every, everything now that you are hearing, Is, will help your, your affirmation that I am meditating on God. Who is God? He is Gati. He is the goal. So you have nowhere else you can abide. Bharta. He is your Beloved Sustainer. In Hindu families, husbands call, call Bhartar, word Bharta. God is the mighty husband. All souls are women. So, from your soul basis, who is most beloved, in whose support you will feel absolutely eternally relaxed and joyous, in whose boundless love you want to be enfolded. That's Prabhu, that's Bharta. He is also known as Prabhu. Prabha is light. 
he is that type of a lord beloved lord any relation with him is like opening the window to the sunlight he brings the the dawn and why he does so because he is light of lights you to figure that out we have already explained how do you see the things of the world experience it by the light of your senses but what the light behind the senses mind or the light behind your mind your intellect or the light behind your intellect cosmic mind and what the light behind cosmic mind brahman the absolute light of lights so that revelation as it progresses in your personality that understanding that you must follow the path of light to discover i am light of lights that movement is movement towards prabhu he who is light of lights he is the prabhu the lord the beloved master literal meaning is lord master prabhu sakshi he is a witness god is constantly here the term sakshi has been used just so that to him to imply that no matter how you are there is always a room for stepping back and looking at your problem objectively any degree of that quality is called sakshi you are becoming witness as you practice that witnessing aspect now you are in a better position to resolve your problem to find the cause and adopt the right method but if you lose your sakshi bhavana then you are already gripped see if you are going to save someone who is drowning in a pool or in a lake and you can save the person only if your head is above the water if your head also goes on sinking then you figure that out so and the climax of the sakshi movement is the understanding that god is absolutely untouched the sun is the sakshi witness of all illuminations countless illuminations and every illumination has a story behind it but sun is only witness but god is a special witness elsewhere in the gita we will find Upadrashtanumantacha. He is an over. He is guiding over you. Nivasa, another word. Nivas means home. Brahma Nivas. Ananda Nivas. another word we use niket anand niket nivas is synonym of, of of niket which means home abode i don't have to explain all your worldly abodes are not real abode not even your body is your abode but brahman that's the absolute abode the revelation i am brahman 
So when you are turning your attention to God, you start developing that type of love that, O oh God, may I be with you for eternity. You are my abode. Without you I can't live. This again is a step before. The highest step, there is nothing but one absolute. Am Brahma. But these steps are brought out in the Gita in a very profound way. Sharanam, another word. Who is there who can give you refuge when you are under big problems and big troubles? Look around you, seek some people's help. But there comes a time there is no help can you get from anywhere that you know of. Then therefore, surrender to God. Saranam, take refuge in God. And another point, don't wait until you get tormented by who will help me. I'm joking, but this is what has been brought out in the Mahabharata. How Draupadi feels helpless when she was being insulted and dragged into the royal assembly. She turns to everyone for help until she turns her attention to God. Oh God, now I am in your hands. So that is the illustration of Sharanam. How surrender to God and surrender again doesn't come in, in one step. There is progressive steps. And that's the secret behind spiritual success. Next, Suhrit. In different forms of relations, very good relations. There is always some expectation. You expect from your friend something. And if your friend does not act the way you want, you ignore. Suhrit is one who will not, in any case, ignore you. It's like a mother will not ignore a baby, no matter whatever way the baby may conduct itself. So that type of loving relation is called suhurit, good-hearted. Prabhava. And God is the source of this entire universe. The entire world universe has arisen out of God. Pralaya. And into God, the, all this world dissolves. Self, therefore, things that come and go in the world shouldn't make your mind in a state of distress. They are all, behind all that there is God, who is the cause of dissolution of things. And He is the cause of origination of things. Origination, things coming into the creation, sustaining it, and dissolving it. All three processes. Who is doing that? God. 
And if God is the love of your heart, where is the cause for your your grief? Try to understand that. But these are very advanced ideals. It is normal where we are living to be dominated by the mind. Mind is limited. So in spite of the fact to hear God is behind everything, mind suddenly doesn't, cannot become relaxed. It is addicted to a long-range habit of ignoring God's presence, ignoring every source of inspiration, holding on to the grief, to, to the sorrow, to the misery, and doing dukkha yagya yagya <laughs> instead of jnana yagya. <laughs> dukkha. Sharing your pain. <laughs> so in brief, when things come up and in creation, allow your mind to be calm and relaxed in the glory of God. Things are driven away by hurricane and brought into dissolution. Remember, even in Hari Ken, Ken is coming from a Lord Hari Hari. Sthanam. Sthanam is where all that is, is established, the base of this establishment. In other words, once you are united with God, you become sthita pragya. Now the question of going anywhere, in whichever way body has to move around, that's one going. Feeling moves around, it's another going. Thoughts move around, there is another type of going. You are never steady. There is always movement. But when you have intuitional revelation, you are exactly in the same spot. I mean, speak allegorically, there is no spot. You are the only reality. All reflected suns have movements, but sun doesn't have any movement. I'm not talking about geography. <laughs> the sun is rooted in its own sthita pragya, and that is the goal of every soul. Every soul is a reflected sun, no matter how shaky you are or how messy. The reality is always the sun. Nidhanam. Nidhanam is a treasure house. A Godward mind finds pearls of thoughts and pearls of wisdom and inspiration, countless, it's a big storehouse, it's a treasure house, that's also allegorical. Any inspiration or divine virtue that you gain, God is like the ocean of, of, of those virtues. Another word, bijam, God is a seed. 
not ordinary, this allegorical for explaining the glory of God, one of the Upanishad gives the simile. The Guru tells the disciple, brings a, bring a seed of the banyan tree. Ask him, what do you see? I see a seed. All right, crush it, break it. He breaks it. It's very hard to break, but it's still it's very thin, small. What do you see? See nothing. And the Guru says, out of that nothing, this big banyan tree comes. <laughs> Not only one banyan tree. Each banyan tree will bring out countless seeds. And there will be countless banyan trees, all out of this little nothing. If that settles in your mind. And this is the physical proof. Now you can allow your intellect to understand the entire universe has proceeded out of Brahman. Brahman is the seed. That Brahman is God. And in Godward movement, you are going to be identified, united with God. But unite term I have already explained. It's just like a reflected sun uniting with the sun. It's just a revelation. I am that. That's what we call Aham Brahma. 19th verse. Tapamya Hamaham Varsham Nigrahyam Mutsrijamicha Amritam Chaiva Mrityusha Sadatat Chaha Marjuna. I am the ultimate goal. Five great glories have been brought into this verse. It is I who below who bestow heat in the form of the sun. I who is withholds or sends forth the rains. I am immortality. I am death. I am existence as well as non-existence. Try to understand now. Vibhuti implies to see the divine glory expressing through the entire universe. That type of subtle sensitive under vision develops. So first point, all the seasons bring different pictures, different set of nature in different ways. But from divine point of view, each expression, in, in brief, when it's too hot, human mind simply begins to complain, hot, hot, hot. But your mind is like an iPad. And all that you experience is not the reality. Why? Because while it is bad to you for you as an individual, so much sun that is coming, it has does immense good to the earth. All the energy that <laughs> showers over all things of the world. I will not go into detail, we'll go into scientific study. Similarly, when rain comes, people begin to shout against too much rain, too much rain. But the trees are dancing while you are shouting. 
This is brought out in one of the Upanishads as Samvratha. Tapantam na ninjet. Tadvratam. If it's too hot, don't condemn it. That should be your vrata. Varshantam na ninjet. If it rains too much, don't condemn it. Ritun na ninjet. Seasons change, don't complain. But these are all allegorical terms implying different changes occur in your life. Sometimes it's changes that are just like a lot of heat you have to bear with. Changes like a lot of cold you have to bear with. But while all these problems and the challenges come in your life, a deeper understanding, you are the sun, not a reflected sun. That deep understanding should calm you down, should at least make you patient. Even this will pass away. And you are not, you, nothing of this can ever destroy you. So there is always in the core of your heart and absolute security. So therefore, if you have that type, Amritam Chaiva Mrityusha, whenever one encounters or one hears the news of someone's death, it is so painful to the mind. But if your mind is Godward mind, you will be thinking in a totally different way. First point, God will not do anything wrong. Everything that happens in the world is source of that is God. And therefore, soul is being led to a profounder state. It's a matter of great joy that the soul is given another, going to be given another opportunity. If the soul is enlightened, the soul simply merges with in God. If soul has not become enlightened, but has pursued certain sadhana, God will lead the soul to a better state, providing the soul with better opportunity. So, therefore, death is also speaking of the glory of God. And then mind deals with sat and asat. And that also is what you consider sat, truth, that's God. What you consider asat, that also is God. If you are watching a cinema show, what you consider a joyous scene, that's the screen. What you consider the most tragic scene, that's why it is screen. <laughs> and the screen shouts, I am. <laughs> I am death. I am eternal life. And so forth. And with this I am going to conclude for today. Om Ram 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 Om Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Prayer for shower of Karuna Mayras, grace of God over all. May your heart open up 
to the glory of God. And God is in your heart. And everything that happens in the world, in your own body, behind all that is God. And behind your own personality, who am I? The I am in you is not the ego. Where is your ego when you go to go to deep sleep? That is proof that you are not the ego. So that that real you must shine and conquer the virus of death. Death is the biggest trouble. Om Triambakam Yajamahe Sugadhim Pushti Vardhanam Urvarukum Vabandhanan Mrityor Mukshyama Mritat Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukhina Sarve Santu Niramaya Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu Makashidukabhag Bhavet Asato Ma Sadgamaya Tamaso Ma Jyotir Gamaya Mrityor Ma Mritam Gamaya Om Puna Madaha Puna Midam Puna Puna Mudachyate Puna Sya Puna Madaya Puna Me Vavashishyate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tata.